Today we're taking 30 national teams and putting them in the NBA. Giannis wins MVP averaging 34 points and 14 rebounds. Wemby wins Rookie of the Year averaging 28 and 12. Jaleel Okafor wins Sixth Man of the Year. Wemby also wins Defensive Player of the Year. Most Improved Player, we're gonna skip right past that. And Lowry Markkinen wins Clutch Player of the Year. In the top four seeds, we have Nigeria, USA, France, and Canada. And to see who's gonna be playing against them, we have the play-in matchups. First, we have Turkey versus Croatia. And I thought Turkey was gonna win because they have Sangoon, but everybody on Croatia played well. And now to see who plays against Turkey, we have Dominican Republic against Georgia. And with two minutes to go, Georgia's up one, so we're gonna hop in. There's Cat calling for the ball in the post. It looks like he's gonna get three seconds. He's gonna force the layup and it's not gonna go in. Georgia has five seconds to get a shot. They're gonna pull the three and Cat's gonna get the rebound. Cat's calling for the ball in the post again. We have one minute to go. Cat's gonna take the fade and DR has the lead. Both teams just keep going in the post. He's gonna take the fade and now Georgia takes the lead. Chris Duarte with the ball. He's gonna swing it to Mendoza. He has three seconds. They're gonna pass it to Horford for three and he misses and DR has to foul now. We have McFadden at the line. His first free throw is up and he knocks it down and his second free throw is up and he misses it and now DR is down two with 18 seconds to go. Five seconds to go. They're gonna give it to Cat in the post again. He's gonna start to drive. He's gonna take the layup and we're going into overtime. And in overtime, Georgia's up three with about 50 seconds to go. Both teams really just keep giving it to the big man in the post. He's gonna take the layup over Al Horford and Al Horford locks him down and gets the rebound. DR's gonna run a pick and roll. Cat's gonna slip early. They throw the lob and he doesn't catch it. That pass was kind of suspect and now DR needs to stop here really badly. They're looking for the big man in the post but he's not getting open. They're gonna give to him with two seconds. Al Horford plays great defense and now DR has to get a three off in 3.6 seconds. Cat hasn't scored yet in overtime. Let's see if they're gonna go to him. They're gonna go to him in the corner, but he shoots a mid-range. He misses it anyway, but he didn't even get behind the three-point line, and Georgia's gonna move on. So now Turkey and Georgia get to play each other to see who moves on to play Nigeria. But first, we're gonna go to the other conference where we have Senegal versus Germany. Based on the starting five, Germany should win this one pretty easily, and Germany ends up blowing the game and losing by six. On paper, they had a way better team, but they lose their first game. And now for the other matchup, we have Latvia versus New Zealand. Kristaps Porzingis should carry the team here, but New Zealand blow them out and win by 39 points. Porzingis had 28, but New Zealand had three 20-point scorers, including Steven Adams, who also had 15 rebounds. So now going back to the other side of the bracket, we have Turkey versus Georgia, and the winner moves on to play Nigeria in the first round. And the game was back and forth in the first quarter, but after that, it was not close. And that's because Turkey's leading scorer was Shane Larkin with 13 points. Their scoring was pretty well-rounded, but nobody went off. And then on the other side of the bracket, we have Germany versus New Zealand. The winner gets to play USA. And the game wasn't even close. Germany blew out New Zealand by 30. And now in the first round, we officially have Nigeria playing Georgia, France playing Croatia, US playing Germany, and Canada playing Senegal. And in the first round, Georgia upset Nigeria. They were the 10th seed and Nigeria was the one seed. Luka and Slovenia beat Sabonis and Lithuania in six. The US swept Germany. Mexico somehow upset Greece with Giannis. Australia beat Montenegro in six. Canada swept Senegal. And last but not least, we have a game seven. We have Bahamas versus Serbia. Serbia is led by Jokic and Bahamas are led by Clay and Dion. Andre Ayton. And Bahamas end up winning by 15. Clay had 26 points to help them make it out of the first round. And they lost because Jokic fouled out. He only played 17 minutes. On to the second round, we have Slovenia versus Georgia, France versus Bahamas, US versus Mexico, and Canada versus Australia. And Georgia's Cinderella run is over. Slovenia sweeps them to move on to the conference finals. And after winning in a game seven, the Bahamas lose in the second round of France. The US sweep Mexico, so now they're the only undefeated team. And Canada's in a game seven against Australia. Australia. And Canada wins by 29, Shea drops 29, and Canada moves on to the conference finals. And in the first game of the conference finals, the US beat Canada by 44. Canada shot almost as well as US from the field, but the free throw difference is crazy. And on the other side of the bracket, we have another blowout. France beat Slovenia by 23, cause Wemby dropped 39 and 10. Luka dropped 29, but it wasn't enough. Game two of US versus Canada, US wins by 21. KD drops 25, Booker drops 23. And for Canada, Shea dropped 30 but nobody else on the team had more than 20 points. And in game two of France versus Slovenia, we have a three point game with one minute to go. They have Evan Fournier on Luka. Luka's gonna use the screen, drive, pull the mid range, and now we have a one point game. We have Nando DiColo bringing up the ball. Wemby's gonna slip. He's gonna throw the lob and Wemby just gets the easiest lob ever. Luka's gonna ISO on Fournier. He's gonna drive, he's gonna take a step back, pass it out to Bino Udre for three, and we have a tie game. We have PG Wemby bringing up the ball. He's not gonna pass it either. He's trying to get past his man. He's pump faking the three, he's gonna pull it. 
and he knocks it down to make it a three-point game. And we have Wemby and Gobert over here celebrating. They're going to inbound it to Luka, down three with 28 seconds to go. He's going to drive past Fournier, take the layup, and now they have to foul. And oh my gosh, they just threw a terrible pass. They're going to pass it out to Luka for three. And Slovenia has a two-point lead with 18 seconds to go. That was such a bad pass from Wemby. With 18 seconds to go, France was down two. It looks like they're going to waste the shot clock here. Nando DiColo has eight seconds left. Wemby's in the paint. They're going to give it to Wemby with four seconds left. He's posting up. He shoots the layup, and he misses it. And now we have Slovenia at the line. This dude's first free throw is up, and it's good. And if he makes this second free throw, the game is over, and he misses it. Rudy Gobert shoots the full-court shot. And it almost goes in, but Slovenia is going to win the game by three. And Luka put the team on his back. He had 37, and the second highest scorer had 12. And back to U.S.-Canada. U.S. wins game three by 19. It looked like Canada had a chance there, but Shea only dropping 21 might have cost them the game. The one game where Kelly Olenek and Matherin step up, Shea only had 21 points. Game three of France-Slovenia was close until the end. France wins by 10, and Luka only dropping 17 points is crazy. And it looks like Canada's not even going to get a win here. Shea dropped 20 in a game four but Canada gets swept and U.S. moves on to the finals undefeated game four of France versus Slovenia Slovenia had it in the bag after the first quarter but they sold Luka dropped 37 nobody else stepped up and on the other side how do you let Gobert drop 25 points and Killian Hayes even dropped 22 and game five of France Slovenia wasn't even close Wemby wins the MVP of that series averaging 28 and 11 and LeBron wins MVP for the U.S. so now in the final we have France versus U.S. game one the U.S. wins by 33 points Joel Embiid dropped 23 Wemby also dropped 23, but he shot 8 for 24. Game 2, the U.S. made a push at the end, but France is going to win the game by 6. KD dropped 28, but for the other team, Wemby dropped 37 points and 14 rebounds. So U.S. finally loses their first game. Let's see if they can win game 3. And they beat France by 26, with Tatum being the leading scorer with 21 points. Wemby dropped 34 and 15, but it wasn't enough. And in game 4, we have a 4-point game with 2 minutes to go. They're going to give it down low to Wemby, but KD gets the steal. LeBron's trying to drive. He takes the layup. He misses it, and Wemby gets the board. Wemby on the break, driving past KD. He's going to take the mid-range in KD's face. That was such a bad shot. LeBron's going to use the screen from Embiid. He's going to take the mid-range. He breaks it. Embiid gets the rebound, though. Embiid puts up the layup, and Wemby blocks it out of bounds. Wemby on the break. He's going to get past Embiid, past KD, but Embiid blocks the shot. LeBron's going to use the screen from Embiid. He's going to drive. He's going to pull the mid-range. He breaks it again, but Embiid gets the rebound again. He puts the layup up on Wemby, and Wemby blocks it again. LeBron's going to use the screen from Embiid again. The same stuff keeps happening. He's going to drive. He's going to kick it to Curry, and Curry gets fouled. Embiid's going to swing it over to LeBron. Why is he so open? He knocks down the three, and U.S. has a seven-point lead. I don't know why they doubled Embiid. is going to use the screen from Wemby. Pull the three. He misses it. KD gets the rebound, and that's going to be the game. U.S. beats France by 7 in Game 4 because LeBron put up a stat line of 32 points, 15 rebounds, and 6 assists. And in Game 5, we have another close one. We have a tie game with 2 minutes left. LeBron has the ball. He almost pulls the 3. Curry's going to use the screen from Embiid. He had an open 3, but he's going to give it to LeBron in the post. LeBron's going to drop step, fake the shot, and take the layup, and he misses it. Wemby's going to go ahead and give it to Gobert. He has Embiid on him. He's going to give it to Fournier, who's going to shoot the three. And France has the lead. What is LeBron doing? LeBron's just running around the court. He's going to take a deep fading three and knock it down to tie the game. They're going to give it to Wemby in the post. He's going to take the fadeaway over KD, and he misses it. Curry's going to try to drive past Gobert. He swings it out to LeBron for three. And LeBron knocks it down again. He's in his bag. They're going to give it down low to Wemby in the post. He has KD on him, so this should be an easy matchup. He did miss his last shot on KD, though. He's going to force up another one and knock it down. Curry's going to use the screen from Embiid, pull the three, and he misses it. So France still has a chance. They're going to give it down low to Wemby. He's going to take the layup over Curry. Why is Curry the one on Wemby? LeBron's going to go ahead and use the screen from Embiid. He's going to give it down low to Embiid. He has Wemby on him. Wemby jumps, and Embiid makes the layup, and the U.S. is up by one. 13 seconds to go. France is down by one, and if they lose this game, they lose it all. Wemby's wasting the shot clock. He's going to use the screen from Gobert. He's going to drive past Embiid. And he takes the dunk over KD. The U.S. has no more timeouts. LeBron has to chuck up the full court shot. And he barely misses it. And France stays alive. Curry dropped 26, but it doesn't matter because Wemby had 36 and 12 with three steals and two blocks. And in game six, France ran away with the game. U.S. was up 3-1. And now we're going to go into a game seven because Wemby dropped 41 and 11. And in game seven with two minutes to go, U.S. is up four. KD's got the ball. He's going to take a step back three over Wemby, and he barely misses it. Nando DiColo's going to use the screen from Wemby. Wemby slips early. They're still going to give it to Wemby in the paint. 
He's going to shoot the layup over KD and make it, and now we have a two-point game. LeBron's going to use the screen from Embiid. He had a pass, and he still throws it down a little late, but gets it to Embiid, and the U.S. are up four now. Wemby's going to set a screen. He's going to roll. They're going to give it down low to him. He forces the layup. He misses it. He gets his own rebound, and he forces up another layup and misses that one as well. LeBron gives it down low to Embiid. He takes the drop step on Gobert, and now the U.S. is up six. France is down six with a minute to go. Wemby's going to take another layup over KD, and he misses that one as well. Wow. Curry's going to pull the three over Nando Nicolo and knock it down, and that might be the dagger. Evan Fournier is going to swing it over to Nando Nicolo for the deep three, and he knocks it down, and France is still in this game. France ends up fouling and sending Joel Embiid to the line. He makes his first free throw, and his second free throw is up, and it's good, so France might need a miracle here if they want to win. Wemby has the ball back in the post. He's got Embiid on him. He's going to force a layup over Embiid, and he misses it. And in Game 7 of the Finals, the U.S. are going to win the Olympics. And LeBron wins the Olympics MVP. If you want to see what the NBA would have looked like if LeBron didn't join the Miami Heat, click the video on the screen right now.